Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today I'm going to share with you the process for creating this miniature Gothic fireplace. It has integrated pilasters and corbels surmounted by a grandly scaled overmantel with an integrated heraldic shield. Lots of lovely surface detail on the mantel and the apron. The firebox is enclosed by a multi-layer gentle Gothic arch. Here's a quick run through of the chipboard components. To begin with, we have these two backing pieces, and then this has been scored on the maker and will be folded into the elaborate shape that follows the angles of the mantle. The overmantle is constructed from this piece, which has also been scored on the Cricut maker. The hearth is constructed of two levels of lightweight chipboard. The pilasters with integrated corbels are made from these funny looking shapes. We'll explain more about that later. The front opening of the firebox is defined by six layers of lightweight chipboard cut into receding arches with a surmounting frame over the top. This creates a beautifully three-dimensional effect. These pieces are intended to create the integrated heraldic shield, which is mounted on the front of the overmantel. And this little stack of four rectangles creates the crown that surmounts the overmantel. These delicately detailed pieces cut from 65 pound cardstock are used to decorate the surfaces and the offcuts also come into play. In addition to the chipboard and cardstock components, we'll be using some scraps of foam core board. But first, it's time to glue up our laminated surfaces. These are for the Gothic arch that surrounds the front of the firebox. I'm beginning by creating the widest arch. And a big shout out to my friend Anastasia for indicating that she would like to see more kits include these little holes that we can use to align the pieces. So I've experimented with that in this design and they work beautifully, I'm glad to say. Thank you so much, Anastasia. That was a brilliant idea. Next, here is the second, more narrow arch, and this will be affixed on top of the larger arch that we just completed. Zig Tiwe glue is my adhesive of choice for these operations. It dries really quickly, but it has just enough working time to allow me to align everything perfectly. And then a brayer is used to press everything firmly into place. Finally, I'm building up the two layers that create the very square frame that goes on top of the two gently curving Gothic arch panels. The frame completely conceals the alignment holes that were used on the arch pieces beneath it. Again, a brayer is being used to make certain that all three of these layers are thoroughly adhered. Next, I'm turning my attention to the pieces that make up both the top and the bottom of the mantle. These larger, more simple pieces are the top and bottom panels for the elaborate mantle. And these smaller pieces with construction slots make up the inner layers at both the top and the bottom of the mantle. It will all make sense once we begin to construct the piece. For now, just layer them up so that you end up with two pieces of each shape that are two layers of lightweight chipboard thick. The next piece that we'll be working on is the apron for the mantle. That's the vertical space between the upper and the lower panels of the mantle that we just constructed. This long rectangle has been scored in strategic locations to allow it to be bent into the angles that will follow the shapes of those mantle panels. It'll all make sense in a minute. For now, it's important to reinforce all of these creases, and for that, I'm using an agate burnisher. The ultimate 
end result should look like a weird M. Now you'll be able to line up the construction tabs and slots between the top of the apron panel that you just folded and the innermost layer of the mantle. There, everything fits together perfectly. Now we're going to begin the process of gluing this all together using super glue. I'll be using Starbond Superfast Thin for all of the super gluing operations in this project. Hold the folded apron piece in place with your fingers and with the other hand apply drops of super glue at the points where the construction tabs and slots intersect. Turn the piece around and apply super glue to the little ledge that runs around the exterior of the piece. Allow that to cure for a few moments and now we can apply the other mantle panel with its construction slots and they will fit directly over the exposed construction tabs on the other side of the apron. Apply super glue to the area where the tabs and slots intersect and allow it to cure for a few minutes. Then flip the piece over and continue applying super glue to the exterior of the piece. I've cut down an old credit card to make a little plastic spatula that can be used to spread the liquid super glue over these small spaces. It works really well. This hardening process is going to ensure that our mantle will be functional for many years to come, no matter how much it's handled. And it will also help the lightweight chipboard stand up to any kind of surface treatment that you care to add later. Set the mantle aside to cure completely, and then turn your attention to the Gothic arch construction, applying super glue a little at a time and smoothing it onto the surface using an old gift card or similar implement. I'm working on little pieces of Teflon sheeting that I keep specifically for these gluing operations. This allows me to work without anxiety about getting super glue onto my work surface. And then I can just peel the pieces off of the surface once they've cured. Next, it's time to layer together the four little rectangles that make up the crown of the overmantle. And that's just a fancy word for a little shelf at the very top of the construction. All four of these pieces get glued together, one on top of the other. And then I use a brayer to reinforce the adhesion. Give the adhesive a few minutes to cure and then harden the exterior on both sides with super glue. A pair of tweezers is very helpful when working with these small parts. Next, we're going to be using a combination of foam core board along with these lightweight chipboard pieces to create thick and durable components for our fireplace. Let's begin with the back of the unit. I prefer and recommend Fabri-Tac as my adhesive of choice when joining items to foam core board. It's an extremely fast and strong solvent based adhesive, but it will not eat into the surface of the foam like many other solvent adhesives will. Once you've applied one of the panels over a scrap of foam, cut away the excess using a very sharp craft knife. One of the advantages of using Fabri-Tac is that it sets up almost immediately, allowing you to go ahead and cut against the surface without worrying about it slipping around against the chipboard as you would if you were using PVA. Once you have sandwiched the foam core board between the two back panels, reinforce everything by using a brayer on both sides. Next, we're going to create the hearth. This consists of two layers. Again, we're applying the lightweight chipboard cutout to one side 
of a piece of peeled foam core board. And this is Ready Board, available in the US at the Dollar Tree. Once the first side is adhered, cut away the excess foam with a very sharp craft knife. The chipboard acts as a perfect template. Now apply the other panel of chipboard on the opposite side, creating a sandwich effect. Press everything firmly into place. Now let's repeat this procedure for the smaller of the two hearth panels. Apply the first side, brayer it into place, and you can immediately cut away the excess foam core. Now apply the other chipboard panel, and you get an idea of how the hearth is going to appear. Let's join them together. Apply adhesive to the smaller of the panels, and line it up with the lower panel. Fabri-Tac gives you just enough working time to slide everything into place perfectly. There, we have a nice substantial hearth. Next, let's create that overmantle. This is a relatively simple operation. The score lines and the shape of the piece itself do most of the work for you. Your job is to reinforce these creases so that you get nice, firm folds. I do this incrementally, convincing the chipboard into shape with my fingers initially, and then reinforcing all of those creases using my agate burnisher. Okay, once all of the side flaps have been folded, you'll need to flatten them out so that you can reinforce those folds at the center of the piece. Crease one side and then the other. We are putting the chipboard under quite a bit of strain during this process, but don't worry. Once we harden all of these creases using super glue, it will be ultra strong. Now that all of the folds have been introduced into the chipboard, it's time to do a dry fit just to make certain everything lines up, and it does. Now, apply a good quality adhesive to two of the flaps. Fold it together, and press the two side flaps together. There's a little bit of play in the design here, so you'll need to fiddle around with it just slightly so that the bottom and top corners are square. This is where the Fabri-Tac really comes into its own. It's holding the piece together, but it's also allowing me to very gently slide the flaps into place, creating a nice square top and bottom. And there. We now have our overmantle. And now it's time for my favorite part of this entire build. I just developed this method and I'm super proud of it. When you're working with sandwiching foam core board between layers of chipboard and you want an elaborate edge like you see here, that's going to be really difficult to line those pieces up if they're separated. That's why I've created this sort of bookend setup here with creasing down the center that is sized to perfectly fold around the edge of a piece of foam core board. And this keeps those complex leading edges aligned with each other so we don't have to worry about lining them up by eye at a later stage. This is going to allow us to design and build much more complex pieces as we go forward. This technique allows us to easily combine 
the amazing qualities of the Cricut Maker that allow us to cut intricate profiles like this with the substantial depth afforded by foam core board and to do it in a way that is almost effortless. Okay, we're creating four of these bookended pilaster shapes. And now we need to cut away the excess foam core board. For this operation, I've chosen to use a very sharp scalpel. Now the edge will not be perfect and that's okay. There are some later techniques we're going to apply to help us with that. And it will actually enhance the architectural presence of these pieces. Okay, the first step, once everything's glued together and you've cut away the excess, is to neaten the edges as best you can with a combination of needle files, metal files, emery boards, or sandpaper. Smooth the edges of all four pieces to the best of your ability. And now we're going to stack two of these together. One for either side of the fireplace. Give the adhesive a few minutes to set up and then apply heat very judiciously to the exposed front edge of the foam core using a heat tool. This will cause the foam to melt and recede just slightly. This will create an even more interesting profile on the front of the pilasters. To position the Gothic arch at the correct depth at the front of the firebox, I'm creating a strip of peeled foam core that's three quarters of an inch wide. I cut my initial strip at about 10 inches long and then lined up one of the pilasters along that strip, made a mark and cut it. Repeat this so you end up with two strips that are three quarters of an inch wide and the exact height of each of the pilasters. Then apply adhesive and press the foam core into place, keeping it aligned with the straight back wall of each of the pilaster units. This will create a platform onto which you can rest the front of the firebox like so. This will align it perfectly with the underside of the mantle. Apply adhesive to the back of the archway and press it against the exposed edge of the foam core supports. Allow the adhesive to set up for at least half an hour. Once the adhesive has had an opportunity to cure, you're left with this construction. Now, I'm going to keep mine stabilized with these one, two, three blocks while I apply some joint compound to the leading edge of the pilasters. You could use wood filler or texture paste. And I think next time I'll use an air dry paper clay to get an ultra smooth finish here. But I have to admit, I was too excited and in a hurry. Whatever you choose, set the piece aside and allow it to dry thoroughly. Next, we need to press into the foam core center behind these construction slots on the back panel. The end of a slot head screwdriver would work great for this. These are sized to accept the construction tabs on the back of the top and the bottom panel for the mantle shelves. That gets pressed in place and held at a 90 degree angle while you apply a dab of super glue. Once the first panel is in place, it's time to install the apron component that we created. Apply adhesive to the top and the back edge of this piece and press it carefully but firmly against that upper mantle shelf. Then apply adhesive to the lower mantle shelf and fit the construction tabs into the lower set of slots. A couple of pairs of one, two, three blocks will hold all of this in place while it cures. Apply a bead of super glue along all of the corners for the overmantel piece. 
and then apply the decorative overlay panel onto the front plane. This will create a very subtle design and it will also help you to place the heraldic shield if you decide that you would like to add that to the overmantel. Here, the rest of the decorative overlay panels cut from cardstock are being applied to the apron section of the mantel. This is only a single layer of 65 pound cardstock. A pair of fine tipped tweezers helps me to place these little panels precisely. Something I could probably never do with my fingertips. The flat back of a palette knife really helps to press all of these pieces into place firmly. To apply the larger overlay panels on the sides of the pilaster units, I'm just painting on a layer of PVA glue and then placing the overlay panel directly on top and smoothing it gently into place with a flat bristled brush. Once all of the overlay panels are in place, it's time to install the overmantel. Center this by eye, making certain that it is snugged up against the top of the mantel and against the back wall, and allow it to cure for a few minutes. To secure all of the decorative overlay panels, I'm adding a layer of PVA glue brushed directly on top of all of the cardstock. This will help to create a uniform surface that will accept our finishing treatment. I also add PVA glue over all of the exposed edges of the foam core board. This will help to seal the exposed edge of the foam and make it possible for any paint treatments added on top to respond in a uniform way to all of the surfaces. It's time to join together all of these amazing components and yep, I'm reaching for Fabri-Tac. The first thing I'm doing is applying this to the top, the back, and the bottom of the firebox and pilaster unit. And then I press the hearth into place against the base of the entire piece. At this point, it's a good idea to check the piece for visual alignment from several angles. And once you're convinced everything's in place, install the crown at the top of the overmantel. Press that into place and make sure it's centered. Admire your handiwork and allow the piece to cure thoroughly. I left mine overnight. While you're waiting for the fireplace to cure, you can work on building the components that will allow you to add the heraldic shield detailing that'll create a beautiful three-dimensional look. Use these little components in any way that suits your fancy. Layering and combining the shapes in the ways that best suit your taste. I like the effect of doubling up these layers for the frame and for the large shield. And then stacking these together. Doing my best to center it by eye and pressing it into place firmly. Next, I think I'll add these two smaller shield shapes layered together and then placed in the center of that open frame. Yep, I like that effect. Now I'm going to play with some of these teensy little cardstock offcuts and then I'll just add a layer of PVA glue directly on top of the shield 
and place the cardstock pieces wherever it suits my eye. Tacking them into place initially and then smothering them with a good layer of PVA glue and then continuing to build the design bit by bit. Anchoring each layer in turn with more PVA. I think I'll use these little pointed pieces at the corners. I really like that effect. Once you've added all of your tiny details, seal them all in with one more layer of PVA glue. And now I'm going to mount this shield onto the overmantle using the underlying cardstock overlay as a guide to help me center this perfectly. Yep, I'm really liking that. Okay, once everything has dried thoroughly, it's time to do the boring but the necessary job of sanding all of these surfaces. I really want the front edge of these pilasters to be a feature, and so I'm taking my time and rolling up a small cylinder of, I think it's 220 grit sandpaper to get as smooth a surface there as I possibly can. Once everything's been sanded smooth, I'm going to be applying two base coats of a creamy white. In an upcoming video, I'll show you how I am going to add lots more detail to this miniature gothic fireplace. But for now, I'm going to stop there with two coats of a creamy white base, very gently distressed with 220 grit sandpaper. This distressing will reveal tiny bits of the underlying chipboard to create interesting detailing. We'll come back and do even more next time. I love this piece so much and I can't wait to see your versions. You can purchase this SVG bundle as a standalone item through the Thicket Works Studio Etsy shop. Thank you for hanging out with me today and until next time, Bye.